Hello everyone, so today I have a very interesting problem for you and we're going to talk about functional equations. Now this problem is easy at first if you just if you know your substitution strategies well you can actually solve this but having said that it involves a little bit of tricks here and there it, it involves like a concept which a lot of people forget many times in exams. So we're going to discuss about it and let's see let's see uh, if we can do it or not. So this is the problem number six from the Indian National Math Olympiad in 2011. And in this video, we're going to be learning about solving functional equations. We're going to learn a trap, which is called as the pointwise trap or the so-called pointwise trap. And uh, after that, we have some book suggestions for functional equations. And at the end, we have a similar but challenging. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so they basically want us to find all functions f that map from reals to reals, such that f of x plus y times f of x minus y, f of x plus f of y whole square minus 4x times f of y. Right, so um, well, what can we do? Well, first, is, let's just start with some basic substitutions. Uh, it's always a good, it's always a good technique to start functional equations that way. So if I just put in x equal to zero and y is equal to zero, on the left hand side I'll get f of zero whole square, right? And on the right hand side I'll get two times f of zero whole square, and uh, minus zero four times zero times f of zero, right? So which is just zero. So we basically get f of 0 whole square is equal to 4 times f of 0 whole square. And you can really see that f of 0 is equal to 0. Why? Well, this is just of the form k square is equal to 4k square, where k is equal to f of 0. And uh, the only solution to this is k is equal to 0. So basically f of 0 equals 0, which is quite trivial. Now, now, now what can we do? Now I'm just going to use another substitution. I'll put x equals to x. And I'll also put y is equal to x. So in other way, I'm putting x equals to y is equal to x. And when I do that, I'll get f of 2x times f of 0, x minus x is 0, which will eventually be 0, is equal to 2 times f of x whole squared, right, minus 4x squared times f of x. Okay, that is great, because now what I will get is I'll get 0 over here. I will get 4 times f of x whole squared over here. And over here, I'll get minus 4 times x squared f of x. Let me just cancel 4 from both sides. So I'll basically get that um, f of x whole squared is equal to x squared times f of x. Or in other words, uh, I can just actually factor this out. I'll take f of x common. And what will be left is f of x minus x squared is equal to 0. Now at this point, we can uh, just divide them into two cases. So case 1 f of x equal to 0 and case 2 is f of x equals to x squared. Actually both of these are valid solutions. You can plug them back into the original equation to check it out. But yeah, both of these are actually valid solutions. So f of x equals to 0 and f of x equals to x squared. Now do we stop there? Is that the end of the solution? Well, no, obviously not. Um, well, what's the problem with this? It seems that I have done everything correctly. I just use substitution strategies. I deduce the value of f of x as a function. So, well, what am I doing wrong? Well, you see that I have basically written f of x as 0 and x squared, right? Now, that may give us like two cases, right? So, let me just write the two cases. If the case A is f may be a piecewise function, right? f may be a piecewise function. What does that mean? That means that, for example, in this case, f of x may be equal to 0 for all x greater than or equal to 0. And similarly, it may be equal to x squared for all x less than 0. Right? So it may be a piecewise function like this. Or the other case might be that f of x equal to 0 for all x and f of x equal to x squared for all x either. Right? Either f of x equal to 0 for all x or either f of x will x square for all x. So which of these two cases is there, right? Now, if I had just left the question over here at this point, there, it, it would have been an incomplete solution. My marks definitely would have been deducted in a subjective exam. 
and because there there are two possibilities rising through this f may be a piecewise function or it may not be a piecewise function and generally it is not a piecewise function so generally we're just proving that um f of x is not of this form right generally it is like this generally speaking right now how do we prove that how do we prove that it is not a piecewise function well, that's called the pointwise trap if you're wondering and the the way to avoid this is it's it's kind of like standard right so we take some a not equal to zero and we also take some b not equal to zero such that f of a is a square and f of b is zero now actually we'll pl plug in x equals to a and y is equal to b into the functional equation and uh, when we do that we get something like this f of a plus b times f of a minus b is equal to a raised to the power 4 which is not equal to 0 right and we have, because we assume a and b not equal to 0 but the right hand side not equal to 0 left hand side is not equal to 0 but therefore we can actually see that f of a plus b is not equal to 0 and we would actually deduce that f of x can be either 0 x square above so therefore f of a plus b has to be equal to a plus b whole squared Using a similar argument for f of a minus b, f of a minus b is also not equal to zero, but therefore f of a minus b also has to be equal to a minus b whole squared. In other words, this equation, if I just label it as equation number one, what we had written over there, this just reduces to a plus b a minus b whole squared is equal to a raised to the power four. And when you actually simplify that, you'll get a square minus b square whole square is equal to a to the power four. And uh, when you just open this up, you'll get a to the power four plus b to the power four minus 2a square b square is equal to a to the power 4 and uh, you'll get b square is equal to 2a square this is a quite neat result actually so we actually received that b square is equal to 2a square now what do we do hmm. okay um, now what we'll do is we'll choose a particular value of c or choose some c and uh, we'll just use the simple we'll just use the substitution strategies like we did before so we'll plug in x equals to um, a and y is equal to c earlier we done x a y b now you're doing x a y c and you will actually get that c square is equal to b square which is equal to 2a square in this case and uh, the other substitution that we'll do is we'll put x equals to c and y is equal to b and if you plug in that you get something like uh, c square is equal to a square right now which, which obviously does not make sense how can c square be equal to a square and 2a square at the same time and c is not equal to 0 by the way right so therefore it is proven that f is not point uh, f is not piecewise and uh, therefore either f of x equals to 0 for all x which is indeed a solution and you can write either f of x equals to x square for all x which is also a solution right so that is how you would avoid the pointwise trap to prove that this that this given function is actually not piecewise right it holds for all x so I hope you enjoyed that. That was a neat trick, and uh, you kind of need to remember that. So in general, in general, whenever you have, you know, whenever you have two cases of f of x, let's say you get one solution, one particular solution a from case one, and you get another particular solution b from case two, you always need to check for the pointwise trap. You always need to check if f of x has uh, is piecewise or not, because it may obviously be possible that it is a for some values of x and it is b for some other values of x, right? So you definitely need to check that. Okay, so then we have certain book suggestions for the functional equations. We have functional equation of B.J. Bangatachala and we have functional equation how to solve them by Christopher G. Swall. It's a slightly advanced book, but also really beautiful if you like functional equations. And uh, after that, we have a similar but challenging problem. Uh, over here, I want you to find all functions f belonging from R to R, such that f times x times f of x plus f of y is y plus f of x whole square. Now, again, in this, there may be a point five strap and it's it's kind of imperative for you not not only to find the solution but also to see for the point pressure to prove that it's not piecewise okay so let me know in the comment section below if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it and until then i'll see you in the next video Bye -bye. the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. 
for more information visit chinta.com